Hello there, welcome back to Living Issues and today we're launching a special Living Issues campaign to help keep women safe on the streets. Singer-songwriter Lindsay DePaul passionately believes that women need to be able to do more than just run if they're attacked and uh, she's living proof that you don't have to be built like a Soviet shot putter to protect yourself. And uh, we can see that um, rather beautifully illustrated here with, uh, with John who we've pinched off security actually. It's just a little bit bigger than you, Lindsay. Um, and we're, we're, you're going to show us in a minute how to, uh, how to defend yourself. Yes. But I have to say, seeing you standing next to John who is well, I have you can to say, see that a gentle soul rather but rather you know bigger. is this a good idea wouldn't you be better off just running no I mean again more research has been done in America than here and the American justice tables found that they showed in 1985 even that you doubled your chances of escape if you fought back and in 1991 it showed that you trebled your chances of escape if you fought back also it showed that you weren't worse hurt if you fought back that the level of violence was determined by the assailant not by your fighting back right now I want to say that not all men are criminals. It's a violent minority of people sure. who do this, so not to think of men as No, we don't want to alarm enemy. people. So. No, and that violent minority and one reported attack makes hundreds of thousands of women frightened in their homes. Nevertheless, you were talking about running away. If you have the option of running away, run away. Mm. If you don't have the option, if it's a hands-on attack, you have to know the options open to you. So right. what I'd like to is illustrate, first of all, is that we all have natural weapons. We have our head, our arms, and our legs to fight with. A man has vulnerable areas, targets, eyes, under the nose, under the chin, the Adam's apple, stomach, <laughs> <laughs> the, the groin. You're not going to slap him like that down there, are you? <laughs> no. <laughs> and also the top of the foot. If I'll do this to your foot, OK? I'm just going to do it with my little um, knuckle here. Be gentle with me, Lindsay. Oh, hurt? dear. Now, that's, that's just nasty, my little... Yeah. That's just a knuckle. If I did that to you, right. can you imagine the pain? The thing is about reversing power, using your natural weapons against the natural targets. First of all, we're going to look at the way that is most common on a street, say, that you are attacked. Right. It's called a back choke, where the assailant's standing behind you and has the forearm to your throat, like this. Now, you can ha actually be choked like this, so turn your head to the side. Remember those vulnerable areas I was talking about? Mm -hmm. Your body is blocking them, so make a curve with your with your um, hip so you can get to vulnerable areas. He's very I think tall. we know which vulnerable area you're talking about. Well, Lindsay. actually, your, your elbow goes into the stomach first. Right. Then use your fist. Clench your fist tightly and hit to the groin. If you can stamp on a foot, stamp on a foot. So keep hitting until that person lets go. Turn around if you can, kick, and then run away. Just get yourself enough time to get away. Nobody's saying be Bruce Lee. And we're not saying that everything is guaranteed, but you are lowering the risks of being a victim. Mm. The second attack might be this. Now, a lot of men teach you to do this. Well, what's the point? If I'm in an arm wrestle with this bloke, who's going to win? He is, because he's much stronger than me. You want to target those vulnerable areas again with your, with your weapons. If I go for his eyes like this, look what happens. Mm. So what you do is you go up in between the arms, straight into the eyes, make some lean back. The vulnerable area of the groin is now much more open to you. You use your top fist to hit or even just grab onto them and knee. Are you all right? Yes. 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 Now, if you're too <laughs> tall to reach, grab the Adam's apple. Should we do that again? Should we show you the whole thing again of, of a back assault? Yeah, do that okay. Again. okay. Turn your head so you don't get choked. Make a, a, an area so you can get to the vulnerable areas, into the stomach, hit the groin, turn around if you can, kick, run away. Brilliant. OK, John, I think we'll let you go and lie down in a darkened room now. <laughs> Thank you, I love the assistant there. OK, Lindsay, if you'd like to uh, sit back down. I suppose, that, you know, the key question really is how do you decide when you're going to go for it and, um, um, and when you're going to run, really? If you can get away, that's your very first option. Right. Never fight unless your life depends mm. on it. If he's standing six feet away, he can stand six feet away. I'm not going to let him get any nearer, and I'm going to run. But if he's got his hands on my throat, I better know what to do, and I better focus my attack, my defence, because no point in banging on a chest. You've got to actually target where the vulnerable areas are so that you can get away and go. In Merlin's case, you know, even if, God forbid, you know, you've been stabbed on the street as, as somebody else... It might have been better than what happened in crime scene number two, and uh, yeah. it's just appalling what happened to you. And brilliant, you're here. But yeah. I said, just to bring you back to, to Julie, uh, you know, before the break. I mean, I suppose you know it, we can know all that stuff. I mean, you presumably knew how to attack someone as, yes. as someone who studied karate, but you know, you were just so terrified, so stunned. I, it? I mean, it, it was just so quick. Um, as I say, I came out of the front door. He approached me because he was at that point there. Um, and it just happened so quickly. Mm. I was stunned and obviously quite frightened. Mm. I'd like to address that, if I may, because karate is 
uh, martial arts. It's not self-defense. And 70% right, right. of self-defense is mental, being prepared yeah. mentally. And the police put on free classes that I would urge any woman watching this program to yes. call up their local police station and go and enroll, and it will be six hours of your life that will save your life, possibly, and empower you. Mm -hmm. I mean, impor okay. an important part of the self-defense is, in fact, like Merlin was saying earlier, she wishes she had thought about these things. You are not likely to be attacked. But if you just think, well, I'm not likely to be attacked, so I'm not even going to think about it, if the awful thing should happen, you haven't got the resources to protect yourself. If you've thought about it, I know it's not likely to happen, but stored in the back of my sure. head, I've got these things, then there is a possibility. Mm. We don't know how we're going to react, but you've got more right. chance if you've thought okay. about it. Uh, we've been joined by uh, Eddie Gorham, uh, our mystery guest for this half. Uh, not a mystery anymore. <laughs> um, you're um, a former um, uh, cabbie, and I know that you're campaigning for changes in the law because um, startling um, London is the only place in the country where there are unlicensed minicabs around, Correct, as, as yes, we were talking yes. about earlier, and I know that you're very hot on that. But do you have any practical advice on what women can do to protect themselves, but given we're talking about the party season and, you know, you're probably going to be ringing up, you know, kind of half-cut late at night for a minicab. Are there any things you can do to protect yeah, yourself? Out, out, outside London, all vehicles are licensed. Minicabs and proper cabs, they're all licensed. So you, the, outside there, you, the chances are that you're going to get have no problems. Inside London's the minicabs aren't licensed at the moment, although they will be. And I would recommend people, if when they ring up, they try and find some details about the vehicle which is going to be sent to pick them up. Registration number, colour, any signs on it, the name of the driver even. Mm. That is not always possible because when you ring up for it, the dispatcher won't know who they're going to send. Or perhaps you could get them to ring you back and let you know who's going. Or if it arrives, ring the firm again and say, what have you sent? Check it out. Mm. And you've got a, a, you know, your top tip for women who are, you know, in that position to whether where they feel under attack. Where they feel under attack, mm. uh, scream and shout. I mean, mm. if they're in the back of a car and you're you're on a one-to-one -one basis, there's very little it can do. Can I just say that um, uh, Lindsay has helped us as part of our campaign to uh, produce this rather dinky little um, advice booklet. Um, I thought it looked like a condom holder, actually, but it's not. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, it's got, obviously, we're not suggesting you use this, you know, if you're attacked, but it's got, it's got um, you know, basically a, a, a summary of the kind of advice. Would you have a top tip, Lindsay? Uh, well, the top tip is try not to put yourself in that position to begin with. Mm. No woman here mm. thought it was going to happen to them, so please, at home, don't, don't take the risks mm. and uh, don't let it happen to you. Take care. Great. OK, Lindsay, thanks very much indeed. And can I just say thanks very much indeed for your calls. Helen uh, calls to say every time I step out of my house, I'm aware how vulnerable I am. As a lone woman, I'm fed up with living my life constantly looking over my shoulder. And Mary from Yorkshire, I was attacked last year, and since then I'm always scared and nervous. I keep thinking that uh, I could and should have done something to prevent the attack. And uh, Teresa from Islington, I think Lindsay's doing a fantastic job. Um, I took a self-defence class recently and I feel much more confident now. I'd recommend it to everyone. And uh, Lynn from Gloucester, a police uh, woman told me that you only need one thing in your handbag and that's a fine steel comb. Oh, that sounds uh, strange advice from a police woman, but anyway, there you go. Um, thanks very much indeed. Uh, that's just about it from Living Issues for today. But uh, before we go, if you want further information on our Women in Safety campaign, there is a fact pack available and uh, you can write for your free copy to fact pack. Carolyn Ball at Living, 160 Great Portland Street. That's London, W1N5TB. Meanwhile, we'll be back on Friday and we'll be asking, is HRT a blessing or a curse? That's Living Issues, Friday, 12 noon. <laughs>